Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. K. R. Ramohan, Associate Professor in the Head Department of Anthropology, Sikkim University. Today we are going to talk a module on practice theory by Boudou, Giddens and Ortner. This module comes in the paper Theories and Methods in Social Cultural Anthropology. So before we go this module, let us see what are the learning objectives. This module will introduce the student to the theory of practice in anthropological tradition, situating the theory of practice in anthropology and the different applications of this practice theory in society. To know the basic premise of the practice theory based on contributions by Perry Boudot, Anthony Giddens and Sherry Ortner and the critique of practice theory. Now let us see how to situate this practice theory proposed by Perry Boudot. Perry Boudot is an influential French intellectual who propagated this idea that it is very important to see how people in a given situation practice the ideas. So, the significant subject of practices has been of importance not only in philosophy but in all social sciences including anthropology. So there is a need to see whether the understanding of practices from the most routine activities of everyday life to the extremely structured behaviors, particularly in the formally established institutions, like in the school, in, in, the, in, in, in religion, in the courts and many more institutionalized established institutions. So, there is a different nature of practices being studied by anthropologists and these practices by the people are localized in nature and some are too generalized and are applicable to wider social reality. Now, as the nature of practices vary from one to another, so does the range of application as some practices are very temporary, some practices are long term, some practices are culture specific and some pra practices transcend the boundaries of cultures which have nothing to do with the culture. So we are interested in this range of these practices in the society done by the people. So to examine these practices, anthropology developed a new paradigm to understand, to conceptualize and to gain insights into the meaning and the role of these practices by the social actors. Now why this happening, why practices are happening, what happens if there are no practices by the people, this is because or a part of this social dynamism 
in the society where we all live. What is this? This is all about this practice theory. In anthropology, practice theory is not a coherent theory that is defined in strict sense of the term. And it is not so well defined theory like any other classical theories that we have come across like functionalism, like structuralism, like structure functionalism and many important theories. But this is often used as a loose approach in conjunction with other theories. For example, like symbolic anthropology, to some extent functionalism and other related interactionist theories. If it is more than a theory, practice theory is some kind of a perspective to understand social realities. We must again remember the fact that the more perspectives we have, the more wider understanding we have about society and all the social realities. Hence, this is not a weakness, this is a strength. One can argue this. To explain one phenomena, why do we need 10-15 theories? Feminist theory, Marxist theory, functionist theory, this theory, that. Because we are understanding the phenomena in many ways, in many directions. The more directions we have, the more comprehension we can have and we can grasp the truth. As postmodernists believe that there is no single truth, there are multiple truths. So practice theory explores, understands and analyzes the dynamics of interaction and the conflict between a social structure, the bigger social structure on one hand and the human agency on the other hand. How people negotiate individual thinking versus the wider social structure which is there above you or we practice this social theory, social structure. Social structure is there with us. We are biding with the social structure. So practice theory highlights how and why there are differences in the motives and intentions of different human beings. And how do we adjust ourselves with each other? And how do we transform their world where we live because it becomes detrimental for your living. So hence, practice theory mainly studies how people act, how people perform in a given structures both formally and informally, specific to their own culture or one's culture. So the main aim of practice theory is to show that people are social actors which affect the social structure in which we live and in turn we are affected by the social structure. So practice theory studies the circular association of social beings and the society is going on circular. One way we are affecting and the other way it is affecting us. 
So it understands the role of social structure on the individual and the way individual adapts and affects the structure through practice, that means through performance, by acting. So culture theorists use practice theory. Culture theorists want to study the whole cultural process. And today we see cultural studies how culture produce text, how culture produce performances, counterproduction, knowledge, all comes under the ambit of cultural study. So culture theorists use this practice theory to explain social or cultural practices in a given culture. So they also use cross-cultural comparisons of studying the same phenomena of a respective practice in a different cultural setting. For example, how A and B interact in a given situation and how A and B interact the same situation in another culture and why do they do that and why do they do here. Here in this case, one can we, we can take the study of healing effect of music in a particular culture. How people perceive or practice one particular music. I give this music to one culture. How do they perceive it? How do they see it? How do they practice that culture? And again, the same thing in another culture. And we can see the things. So who are the main proponents of this practice theory? Practice theory in anthropology has assorted and advocates and have developed in two phases in history. The first is being in the 20th century where they laid the foundation and it is done by Peri Budo with his famous book which is also considered as an exceptional work called The Outline of the Theory of Practice and subsequently he has come out with another exceptional work on the logic of practice. Following Budo, Michael Foucault, another predominant French intellectual who has revolutionized the whole post-structural thinking, has published a book on discipline and punishment, birth of the prison. So Foucault's the concept of discipline is just like any other concept of what you call Budo's habitus. And this Foucault says discipline signifies both structure and power that is imposed on human body. Another celebrated sociologist, Anthony Giddens, has published in the lines of Peri Budo a work on central problems in social theory, action, structure, and the contradiction in social analysis. Followed by another book, The Constitution of Society, Outline of Theory of Structuration. So these seminal works all centers around the theory of practice. The main proponent of theory of practice is Peri Budo with this famous book on Outline of a Theory of Practice, in which Budo highlighted and explained how practice theory in anthropological thought, which is useful in understanding people's practices in everyday life. So he proposed three concepts. One is habitus, the second one is doxa, and the third is practice. To understand the rules, that result in this dynamism of social behavior, which leads to or contributes to the theory of practice, where anthropologists can gain some insights by using Budo's concepts. So what is the concept of habitus? According to Budo, 
the concept of habitus is central in the theory of practice. So habitus is nothing but it is a way of life. It is a lifestyle. It is people's expectations. It is people's activities. And the values of a particular social group that has been developed over a period of time. Now this habitus could be either from a past particular past experiences which are been coming from routine life of activities. The concept of power according to Budo is created culturally. So who holds the power? What is power actually? To what extent one can hold a power? Where does power lies in a society? Who controls? Who holds the power in the country? And in what aspects they holds the power and how it controls the social life? Buddha says power is created culturally by the people. And it hold only some people hold this power. And it is legitimatized by that people, that section of the people, which is socially and symbolically valued through constant interaction of agency and structure. Agency means how people interact with one another and the structure means the overall structure, the rules, regulations and all those things. For Budo, habitus is created unconsciously because we are practicing, practicing every day. We don't know what is the meaning but we practice it. We take it for granted without any effort, any, any biological activity or any cultural activity. Just like that we, we take it for granted and we put it in our daily use. So it is like a more of a social processes. Though it is individual, but it is like a social process as we do it unconsciously based on free will by specific structures. So, habitus is not something that is permanent. It keeps on changing over a period of time. Today we are, today we are like some other time, you know, we, we unconsciously again take some other thing. And, Habitus is both physical and psychological maker of one's position in society. Habitus could be result of many factors that embody social structures like caste, race, religion, which are reproduced in terms of individual beliefs, attitudes and lifestyle. According to Budo, Habitus can also be regarded as set of attitudes, ideologies, beliefs that have resulted in creation of what an individual becomes in the end. What am I? I am because of my attitudes, of my belief system. I have certain ideology and that these things makes my practice in the society. And it makes a role of choices for the people. If I have a certain ideological, I act according to my ideological. I practice according to my ideology. I practice according to my attitude towards marriage or towards family or towards political organization. I have a different lifestyle. All this comes together under this gambit of habitus. Budo has propounded another important concept called capital or cultural capital. Capital in a sense, Budo is nothing to do with the material aspects of capital like money. In pure economic terms, in commercial terms, what is the capital 
how much money but here the concept is different what is called as cultural capital. So there is an extension of this material things to from cultural aspects. It has a social, it has a symbolic meanings. And this capital can be accumulated and also transferred to one generation to another generation. So when we look at the social dynamics of a society, who holds the capital? For example, in India, historically it is considered that Brahmins are the most educated people, they can read the text, the religious scriptures, who can interpret the, the wisdom and all the generations are trained towards to read and by heart and interpret this text whereas other communities are not in this profession. So in a sense this section of the people demanded a respect, had a high social order because you hold that capital you have that knowledge with you. It is not the money, but that knowledge becomes capital here. It also, this capital also been percolated to other aspects like esteem, to some extent power to control certain things, and a hierarchy in the social order and this has been accumulated over a period of time and it has been transferred from one generation to another generation and who controls these things a group of people who are educated who knows how to deal with the textual things for Budo these people are found in every culture according to their own system and rest of the people do not have this capital with them. Budo also floated this idea of fields. So what is field according to Budo? Budo says fields are social and institutional grounds. An analogy has taken a ground where individuals develop their habitus to put it very simply. So there is a field, field means nothing but an institutional ground which can be compared to a geographical level where individual develops this habitus. So there is an interplay of human action and social structure and there is a difference of levels of power, who holds the cultural capital, who does not hold the cultural capital in this instrumental field where people are placed symbolically. So the field in terms of its context and environment has a direct bearing on the development or creation of a habitus. So field, power and habitus. Let us take a simple example. A woman may feel very liberated, outspoken, independent in her workplace, in an office. So this is a field, it could be imaginative or it could be reality. The same woman who comes to the home, the field is different here. She may not have the power here, the habitus is different here, the habitus is different here, the structure is different here. The agency is different here, the structure is different here, the agency is different here. Because in the field, according to Budo, there is a boss there at your home that is her husband. 
her in-laws and other social structures come into play there you are the daughter in law you 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 cannot behave like a officer which there the, the other field you are not liberated in your home you are liberated in the office because you carry an equal right with other colleagues you argue you say that i am also equal like you but in the house the field is entirely different which is a reality based so look at the dynamics of power structures at home power structures at another field the habitus is different so budo gives this kind of an insight that how people act out within the gamut of these kinds of structure and agency Buddha's important concept is called doxa. Doxa is for him experience of the social and natural world as it appears to oneself. It could be value, it could be belief, attitudes in a given society. But people accept them as they are i have a set of value you have a set of value right and wrong good and bad and we bring it in the habitus this doxa influences the habitus in sometimes another influential thinker in sociology is anthony giddens giddens is famous for his theory of structure asian where giddens tries to combine the synthesis of two polarized concepts of one is human agency and the social structure which has been heavily influenced by budo's concept of structure and agency and how these two things affect our human behavior with this he proposed this theory of structuration so according to giddens an individual and his autonomy was influenced and affected by the given social structure at the same time human agency helps in maintaining and adapting to these structures therefore giddens put in a new perspective that human agency not only maintaining the structure but he can also alter the structure with other human beings at some given point of time so he is placing the dynamics of practice here again and it is new idea that human beings voluntarily create social structure at some point of time following the bandwagon sherry ortner has also taken many insights from theory of or practice theory unlike budo and giddens ortner's work does not talk about social reproduction but ortner idea is on the serious games on the lines of conflict and transformation within a society so ortner give three aspects of practice one is the power shift which is based on conflict which is also results to transformation how power is shifted to so the view of power has to be changed 
power should no longer be seen in terms of dominance of one class over the other. What Budo said that cultural capital, those who holds will control certain things, not in the material things but knowledge. Even to some extent, Michael Foucault said that knowledge is power, which are displayed through various institutions. So power as a concept should be understood in terms of the relationship between individuals. One is powerlessness and one is powerful. Why? Because there is a relation between these two. So power per se is not somewhere else. So power is created by human agency and is not an objective force in the society. So habitus, Budo's concept, is a concept important in understanding how people habituate power in this social structure. Meaning that, like how Brahmins have the control of over certain things and we are so habituated that to be subordinate, to listen to the text or to the interpretation of the things, we never think in terms of changing the power structure. That way, Ortner says that there should be a paradigm shift in why not we become the power holder. So there is a process should be needed so that it can be changed. And this is what Ortner says, the historic turn. At some point of time, there will be a turn. As the name suggests, it is like an anthropological movement where the conventional theories dealing with universal theories, but they did not study the individual cultures. So what are the key factors in cultural practice which shapes or helps in understanding why there is some effect in contemporary culture? why there is a power shift in one particular culture rather than taking at a large scale. So in the third phase, Sherry Ortner says that one should reinterpret the concept of culture with these changes. The stereotyping should not be done. So practice theory interprets culture as a dynamic, as a mobile. It is culture means according how people give meaning to their lives. To summarize, in the whole anthropological understanding, anthropology takes practice theory as not a very well defined coherent theory in its own strict terms, but rather it is just a point of view mostly or widely understood in interactive or symbolic anthropology which has been much discussed in interpretive anthropology like from Clifford Geach and other many scholars in interactive theories. But this is one way of understanding how people construct a social reality. In that sense, practice theory explores While understanding it analyzes the intricate, the subtle dynamics of interaction between people, 
the conflict which arises between human agency and the social structure. In this practice theory, Budo has given three important concepts. One is the habitus, the other one is the cultural capital, the third one is the doxa and lastly the concept of fields. Following Budo's insights, two prominent thinkers as influenced by this understanding from an individual point of his Anthony Giddens, which has proposed the theory of structuration and Sherry Ortner has taken further Budo's practice theory and come out they said there should be a power shift and one should reconfigure and reinterpret how cultural dynamics are taking place at a local level. 